Hi there, guys. Um, okay, just wanted to make sure I was on. I, um, I've been trying to come back and start making videos again, and uh, stuff will come up, and then it's like my um, my com my phone at first wasn't really uh, it wasn't taking. It's like it ran out of space or something like that. Anyway, I'm back. So today I wanted to come and do this video. Um, and I've been wanting to do this video, but I kind of got inspired to go ahead and do it today off of something that I saw. I saw a clip and some of you, uh, some of you may have seen it also, but I saw this video about uh, it was it was Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he was saying how um, a lot of these brothers today don't want virtuous wives. Like they not they not looking you know for for good women, you know. Uh, they're out here in the club and in the street, whatever you know, and just you know trying to, in my opinion pretend, you know, that that's what they're looking for. But, you know, um, what I wanted to say and what was on my mind is the fact that um, the fact that um, okay, um, it's not something that's going to mess up my video. But, um, What's been coming to me is that for a very long time, you know, women have been blaming themselves. You know, women have been, you know, hearing that, you know, especially lately um, and kind of for the past few years that, you know, women aren't virtuous, you know, they aren't feminine enough, they're masculine, they are um, just not good women. You know, they are gold diggers. They are all these different things that are so, it's so discouraging to hear. And I think a lot of women, especially a lot of younger ones are, they're kind of on the self blame type thing or on the, well, what did I do wrong? What's wrong with me type uh, idea. And you know, but one thing I will, though, say about the young women is that they're not wasting any time and they are not afraid to divest. They are, they are just, they're, they're just not afraid to do that, even though, you know, they may not get it. They don't understand. They don't know why, you know, and they may ask those questions. But at the end of the day, they're not afraid to divest. It's just like, okay, that's fine. Cool. You don't want me? I'll go somewhere else, you know. And this is what they're doing. And um, I applaud that. I'm happy about that. I'm glad that they are, you know, instead of sitting around and, and waiting for, you know, many of these men to change, many of these men to change their mind, change their ideas about women and everything, because I personally don't think it's going to happen. I think they're doing exactly what they uh, want to do. And I, I I think it's a much more serious side to it, a spiritual side, a spiritual aspect to it that, um, as to the reason that they're doing it. And... Um, I'm not going to really get into that so much, but I want to get back to the point, uh, kind of, you know, going from what um, Minister Farrakhan said. Um, and what he said was that, you know, what, what he said was very, it, it's very on time. It's very on time. Because, you know, right now you have this big, huge influencer. Everybody knows him. You know, I don't like to, to speak his name just because I, I don't want to even speak his name, you know. And so, but this guy is out here, you know, influencing uh, the men, you know. 
he, he's influencing 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 a lot of men right now not all of them of course but he's influencing some men um and basically in my opinion all he's really doing is just talking him them out of women <laughs> you know that that's really all he's at the end of the day that's what he's doing is he's talking them out of women but once again uh, it, it's it's spiritual some spiritual it's, it's spiritual reasons uh, to all this and why, and, and, you know, why a lot of these men are even listening, you know, it's all, it's all spiritual. And so, you know, sometimes it might be that, you know, you don't get it or you don't learn until it's just too late. You know, everybody has their own agenda. Everybody has their own reasons for doing what they do. I spoke a little bit the other week, I made a video um, as to why all of this is happening. And uh, I gave, in my opinion, a big part of what I believe some of the issue is. But getting back to women blaming themselves and women, you know, trying to figure out, well, what is it? What did I do? Is it my fault and everything? And I'm going to tell you just right now, right off the bat, it's not you. It's not your fault. It's not Anything that you're doing, you know, these men can come out and, like I say, say that women are too masculine, women are not feminine, women uh, won't let them lead, women um, have all these issues, all these problems, they're gold diggers, they're not good mothers, they're whatever. We could say all of that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's a trick and it's more gaslighting, really, is what it is. Um, our community collectively participates in mass gaslighting. They participate in mass manipulation. They participate in mass narcissism. And I'm talking about the men. Of course, there are some women who do this stuff too. But I'm talking about just in general, you know, just in general. Um and keeping to my point, because I don't want to make the video too long, these are things that are done on purpose. These are things that are done uh, on a big, wide, broad scale. They're done. Uh, they're done collectively a lot of times because, you know, you have these male platforms that are, that are out here talking to men. And these men are, for whatever reason, taking note. They're listening. Um, and they're they're buying into um, into these ideas and, and into these ideologies, you know. And um, you know the the main one, you know the what it produces and what it causes is you know them speaking and saying these things about women, and a lot of them agreeing, well, a lot of them believing it and 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 acting on it. And you asking what's wrong, you asking, is it my fault? You asking what the problem is. It, it's like I just said, it's nothing. It's just that these men are purposely, collectively doing the things that they're doing. They're purposely not marrying women. And I'm talking mostly about the black community. They're purposely doing this thing that uh, you know, now it has a name. It's called love bombing. They're purposely love bombing, purposely giving you all this attention, making you, you know, lower your guards and lower your uh, defenses. And then, you know, all of a sudden, once you begin to get into them or whatever, then they're, they're gone or, you know, once they get what they want, they're gone or just whatever. Um, making you have feelings, making you... Uh, feel like, you know, this is different, they're going to be there, whatever, and then just all of a sudden they just get out. All of these things, are. It, this is not stuff that you're doing. This is stuff that these men are listening to other men, tell them how to get over pawn women, how to, you know, pump and dump, which I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm, I'm kind of really just finding out. I mean, I knew of it and, and the concept of it and, and that it happens, but I didn't know that there was a name out there for it, that they're actually out here 
doing pump and dump, like just, yeah, I'm going to have sex with it and then I'm just going to go with that. And so, yeah, this is, this is a collective effort. This is something, like I said, that a lot of these men are teaching and doing. A lot of these men who are trying to draw men away for whatever reason, they're using any insecurity, any childhood damage, any whatever they can use to lure these men away from women, from children, uh, their children, and just from being responsible. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not putting this on those, those teachings of those men. This is strictly those men's fault. If you get with a woman, however, in, in whatever capacity, and you keeping that relationship together, is on you if that's what you really want. Now, if you're playing and tricking people and trying to play with people's head and trying to run game, then at the end of the day, you're just going to wind up empty anyway. But having children is a whole nother thing. If you're out here making children, making babies, not supporting them, not taking care of them for whatever reason, it's, it's not going to be the woman's fault. You know, I, there are slight circumstances, but at the end of the day, um, you know, this is on you while you're not taking care of your child, while you're not being, you know. I, I just heard a man on social media call into a show, and he was, um, you know, he was doing pretty good up until the, the, the point of when he started talking about um, this, his, his girlfriend that he was going to marry tricked him into... A baby and because she stopped taking her birth control now you can't do that you can't do that because I mean it, it's time so so far time out for these men to stop blaming everything on the woman they got condoms they got vasectomies they got other male birth control whatever that you cannot sit up here and leave birth control to a woman and I don't understand and know how full-grown men don't realize that if you don't want a baby, you protect yourself. I don't care what she said. You protect yourself. You know, I mean, these are things that I taught my son when he was probably a preteen before he was even having sex. I taught him that. Like, you don't sit and let no woman dictate whether or not you're going to have a child. I mean, not because all women lie, not because all women dirty, not because, you know, they're just trying to trap you and get you. I mean, most of these dudes out here are not worth getting anyway. So it is nothing to trap. Like, it's nothing to, for, she want to hold on to you for what reason? Like, you know? And so, you know, it, it's just really ridiculous that for a few moments of pleasure, you got an 18-year responsibility and then some because it doesn't stop at 18 but you got an 18 year responsibility uh because you wanted a few moments of, of pleasure and don't want to be responsible and then want to blame people that's what we got to get out of we we have to get out of that if we're an adult man or woman we are going to have to get out of that that blaming somebody else for our problems and our issues so I'm going to go ahead and end the video. I'm, I'm hearing that they're doing some work outside of my, sound like I'm right outside my window. And I don't want that to be an interruption to my video. So, you know, just to, just to wrap it up, ladies, it's intentional. It's intentional that they're doing the things that they're doing, you know. Um, so many other videos I want to make on how these men, so often their behavior is the same as it was when they were in high school. And that's exactly what they act like. They act like high school boys in the locker room, high school, you know, and, and I think I'm going to go into that just a little bit here. I think a lot of it is because for so many of them, 
high school was that highlight time in their life. Like that was it. Like some of them probably were in sports. They were playing, you know, on a team or whatever, you know, they were young, they were popular. Some of them were probably very handsome. The girls wanted them, the girls liked them and everything. And, you know, that was like the highlight time of their life. They were with their mom, they had no bills to pay, everything was given to them. You know, it was just a good life. They could hang with their boys all day. They didn't have no responsibility. And now you see, when you look at many of their lives, they're still living that way. They're still even trying to recapture that. They're still just with their boys, wanting to fool around, don't want to do nothing all day. Many don't want to work. Um, some of them still living with their mom, <laughs> you know, uh, getting girls, exploring sex and all that. That was that high school time and all that then too. And a lot of them are still acting like that is where they are. Like they full grown men sitting up talking about women's makeup and hair and, and everything else. That, that's what you do in high school. That's where you leave it. Oh man, she ugly. Oh man, she, oh yeah, but I, I man, she too dark and what are, you know. That's high school stuff. Like, and you still got full grown men, 30s, 40s, late 40s, 50s, still talking about the same stuff, hanging with their boys, hanging out, you know, not being grown up, not being responsible. You know, there, there's a Bible verse that says that when I was a child, I, I, I acted like a child, behaved like a child and thought like a child. But when I came, became a man, I put away childish things. You know, and I don't see them putting away childish things. I, I think they're continuing in it and, and the things that they do because that's where they're stuck at. Like that, a lot of times, you know, in going through um, reading a lot of the things that I read, like on mental health and things like that, you know, you find that trauma Usually, once trauma hits a person and wherever they are at that time, age, and area in their life or whatever, usually it's in childhood and usually it's like very early in childhood. But whatever that was that hit or changed or caused them to not want to change or just whatever, that's where they get stuck at. And that's where they, their life kind of uh, halts right there. And that's what I see for so many black men is that they are stuck in that high school, some of a middle age, uh, middle school area. When they were popular, when they were young, like I said, when they had the girls, when they were getting sex and, you know, they didn't have no responsibility. They could run to mom and run to mama and mama was taking care of everything. And, you know, somebody cooking for you, cleaning for you, all that. That's still the stuff that they ask for. And it's not, even in my opinion, that they are looking for a wife or whatever and that type of lifestyle to, to have that done. No, they just want, they just feel entitled and their mindset is still as to where they want to be taken care of. They don't want responsibility, but they want to be taken care of. You know, have babies, have babies all over the place and mama gonna protect me. Mama gonna get on the phone and tell that girl, hey, they ain't none of my son, baby, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, they are still there. Like, as a teenager, as a, as a young boy, in so many ways, I can see you being childish and immature enough that, you know, you had a baby, didn't use protection, or whatever. And, you know you scared, you running, you don't want to take that responsibility. But any good mother, if that's your baby and it's proven that that's your baby, you need to stand up, be a man, go get yourself a job, go work out of school, do whatever it is that you need to do to take care of your child, you know? And, you know, that I could understand that as teenagers, but now here as grownups, as grown men, you still running, you still scared, you still talking about that ain't my baby, and you know that penis and vagina equals baby, and you know you didn't wrap nothing up, you know you, you, you are capable of having children, you know that you didn't get a vasectomy, you know that it can happen, and you want to be childish and say, oh, that's her baby, oh, she tricked me. Oh, she held my legs down and I had to do it. 
man, come on. Come on. Y'all y'all sound so juvenile and it's sad. And there is going to have to be and definitely going to come a spiritual reckoning uh, for so many of them. Um, I see it. <laughs> you know, um, I've been thinking, saying, and feeling this way for a very long time. But, you know, at one point, you know, it just it just wasn't time. And now it's time. I can I can say these things freely. I can bring these things up. And 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 you know the beautiful thing for women. And I'm gonna get off here. The beautiful thing for women is that we're coming back to a time where women are beginning to get into that camaraderie state where women, some are getting back to where we are defending each other. We're taking up for each other and not siding with a man just because you're a man or just because you're desperate and you, you think he's going to like you or you want a man or whatever. You know, women's friendships, women's camaraderie is so important and it's so vital and it's so needed and it's so strong. And I think for so long, this is why so many men used to try to drive wedges in between women and, and stop it. You know, they're getting louder out there. I'm going to cut this video off. Uh, I went longer than I said anyway, but I'll come back for more videos. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And until the next video, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time.